Hello, this is Tor from IDCON. I'm here today with Uwe Forsberg. And uh, today we're going to talk about the role of an operations maintenance coordinator. Um, this is in the series of, that we have here on the YouTube. We have several roles we've talked about. So today we're talking about the OMC. There's another video here too with link on it, link to it from our training seminar where Terry Taylor talks about the uh, uh, operations maintenance coordinator as well. Um, but I'm going to start with the names that we, we called, uh, op, here at Didcom we called OMC, so Operations Maintenance Coordinator, OMC. Uh, it's a little bit long name, some people call it filter, some people call it gatekeeper, um, but, but same thing pretty much I think, yeah. maybe some small variances there. But um, Let's talk about the main purpose, why do we really need a gatekeeper? Well, maintenance uh, need a good way to communicate with the operations to schedule work. Mm -hmm. And if you have one point of contact, that's kind of the purpose of the, the coordinator that we call it. Um, you know, normally you see people talking to the process engineer, the shift supervisor, the operations manager, uh, maybe other staff people in operations. It gets very confusing. Uh, yeah. Know, what is the communication? What are we going to do? Who knows what? And so right. that's that's the kind of the problem that you see sometimes. Yeah, because then you have ten people getting work requests, and how do we prioritize that? How do we can all coordinate all those work requests? Yeah. So everybody gets to scream. Whoever screams the loudest gets the work done, right? Yeah, well, that's usually what happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm thinking of another thing too. So also, you have a production schedule, and you have a maintenance schedule, and somebody from operations have to. We can't, as maintenance, we can't just go in and start doing maintenance work. We have no. to say, look, when, when is equipment down? And somebody has to tell us when, when is equipment down. And, and that, again, to your point, there has to be one point of contact that says, okay, at 4 o'clock tomorrow we're going down, right? Yeah, I mean, the idea is to maximize the output of the, of the production. That's why exactly. maintenance is there, too. So, yeah. so I, th I think this is a super critical role in the, in the whole work management planning and scheduling process. I mean, if we don't have this one point of contact, we can never get any order. Anyways, um, so maybe you can describe a little bit where in the work process. So we have a bunch of work requests coming in. Describe, mm -hmm. describe where the OMC fits in. So the <coughs> OMC should be the uh, you know, person that uh, filters those uh, requests. So, and a lot of times we think it's best practice if they do that together with us the maintenance supervisor. Right, because they, they know what, what the technical... Yeah, it's, you have the specialist from operations together with the specialist from maintenance. Um, the coordinator needs to make sure we understand the scope of work. Uh, is there some approval that needs to be involved in terms of cost? And, and um, I think the priority is important here. What, what is the priority? Do we need to do it today? Do we need to do it the next few months? So we have a bunch of work requests coming in practically from yesterday and the operations maintenance coordinator, OMC, and the supervisor sits down, basically go through those work requests and puts priority on them. Yes. Maybe clean out, this is a duplicate, we're not going to do this one. Yeah. So you get a little bit of cost control there too because we, can, mm -hmm. we had 10 work orders from last night and we can say these three we're not going to do, right? Yeah. And um, I think uh, a good thing to do is to for your backlog is that they do a quick estimate on what, how much time it's going to take. Mm -hmm. And then when you plan the work order later, you're going to get a more detailed estimate. But so it, guess, like yeah. four hours, eight hours, yeah. ten minutes. It usually even out at you, yeah, right. overstate or under, you know. Well, all right. But then you can kind of start looking at your backlog and saying this is about how much work we have. We have ten yeah. weeks of work or we have a hundred weeks of work, right? Okay. So incoming work requests, what else? What, what else do they need to do? So the other part of that is, um, and I mentioned that again, if we don't understand the scope, we might go and want to go back to the requester. So that's one thing. Uh, the next thing is, you know, what are the work that's going to be scheduled for next week? So they need to be part of the planning and scheduling meetings, as we call them. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of that is to say, okay, what is the work that needs to be planned for the next four weeks? Okay, so two more parts of so screening work orders, and you're adding the what should be scheduled for next week, somewhere Wednesday, Thursday, we say, okay, this is what we're actually going to do next week. Yeah. And then the third thing is, what are we going to plan for the next four weeks? Yeah. So you, that's a meeting with a the planner then, I would think. Yes. So that's, in some cases, we did that separately and have a planning uh, prioritization mm -hmm. meeting. 
or we do that together in a planning and schedule meeting. What we notice sometimes when you're in a kind of a reactive environment is that it's hard to focus on the plan part. You just want to schedule work to get it done. But all uh, most work require that you have the parts, you know, scaffolding, whatever, the right people or the contractors. So you can't do that, you know, the same day most of the time. So. All right. And I, I've seen also that this role seems to be changing a bit over time. If we're in an extremely reactive situation and this role is new, that role has to be pretty strong in the beginning and very, mm -hmm. very, it has to be an almost like a referee kind of, you know, no, you can't have this done, you know, now. And, and, and as, as we mature, I think that changes. Yeah, so I think uh, in that reactive environment, the coordinator or the operations and maintenance coordinator need to screen all the emergency work that's coming down. Mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to, what, what happened is that in a reactive environment, everything turns to be a priority one. Yeah. And when you plan and schedule work, keep these guys effic effective, just doing the work, the schedule work, uh, you need somebody to kind of screen this so they don't get interrupted. And what we see many times is that you get calls to the supervisor directly to the mechanics or electricians and then they have lost time uh, on the plan to get a work that you're right. doing. Okay, great. So um, do you see this as a, w we're using the name role. Do you see this as a full-time position or a role or part-time position? How do you see that? No, I, I think if, if you're a large organization with several units, I think each unit need a role that is uh, doing this. Uh, I think it's a full-time position. Okay, for the most part? Yeah, I mean, because there are other things this person needs to do, making sure that you know equipment is prepared for maintenance. Uh, lockouts is another one that we see a lot of uh, delays in, in work because mm -hmm. lockouts are not done in a timely manner, for example. Right. Well, I think, it, I, I think I agree with you. I think it's best if it's a full-time position. I've seen in, in smaller organizations, smaller I mean you may have six, seven people in maintenance in your area, that may be a part-time position, smaller. Yeah. But otherwise, for the most part. I want to go back to what you said about lockout and tagout. So this person is also responsible. The fourth thing then is to make sure that we lock out, tag out, and get equipment ready for maintenance. Yeah, so uh, one uh, uh, thing we, we have experienced was that uh, the short shutdowns in our paper mill, um, they were delayed many times, and then uh, operations started asking, why are we having delays? Well. We start looking at that, it's because the lockouts that there was the responsibility of operation actually was delayed. Right. And then the startup was delayed. And by having the coordinator there, we had most of the lockouts done in, in, a, in, a, in time, so to speak, in a timely right. manner. Uh, and that was kind of the gain, and we saw at least a couple hours of uh, production gain starting up on time right. based on that. So that's a pretty quick win. You, you know, we, we implemented the OMC and, and uh, the first first shutdown, we're, we're cutting two, two hours off, off the shutdown. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's uh, $30,000 in pure profit. That's an expensive extra cup of coffee there if we, if we don't do that. Yeah, I mean, if you have a 12-hour shutdown or a 15-hour shutdown, two hours is actually a lot of time. Yeah, and absolutely. Well, great. Uh, anything else we need to know about the OMC? I mean, there's a lot of things here, the meetings and the details and that, but just for the role, I think we have a pretty good understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, you know, screening the work, understanding the work, helping schedule and, and setting prior priorities for planning. Yeah, and getting uh, equipment ready. Equipment ready. Um, so that's kind of the main purpose of the OMC. OMC, yeah. Great. All right. Well, thanks for looking in and uh, please subscribe. There uh, should be a button down here and don't forget to click the little bell so you get the updates. We try to do these videos mm -hmm. about once a week. So thanks yep. for coming.